Okay, welcome to our notes for writing polynomial equations. And on the front, um, we've got some vocabulary we want to go over together. Fundamental theorem of algebra. That theorem states that all polynomials have the same number of complex zeros as the degree. And this is review from algebra two. So you should have learned this fundamental theorem of algebra then. Um, remember that the complex numbers, um, they include real or imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers are the square root of negative one, right, which we refer to as i, little letter i. So when you see i, like as in 2i um, or negative 2i, that would be an imaginary number. 2 square root of negative one, negative 2 square root of negative one. Okay, the imaginary numbers have the property that when you square i, so i squared, that returns negative one because when you square a square root, the square root is the inverse of the square, they cancel, and so when you square i, you get negative one, which is a real number. Okay, so complex um, numbers include real numbers or imaginary. And real numbers, um, when they're zeros, they are x-intercepts on the graph. Imaginary zeros, though, don't show up um, along the x-axis as intercepts on your graph. Okay, then along with that fundamental theorem of algebra comes this idea of complex conjugates. Imaginary numbers always come in complex um, conjugate pairs. So if you have a zero of 2i, your polynomial has to also have a zero of negative 2i. They're a conjugate pair. Right? If you have um, a zero of x equals 3 plus i, Okay, then you would have to also have its conjugate, and the conjugate of 3 plus i is 3 minus i. Okay, imaginary numbers, um, when they're zeros, will always come in conjugate pairs. So do irrational zeros, so zeros that include square roots that are not perfect squares. For example, 5 square root of 3, if that is a 0 on your polynomial, negative 5 square root of 3 has to be with it. Okay? Or if you had um, a 0 of x equals 1 plus the square root of 2, right? then because that is an irrational number, 1 plus the square root of 2 is um, is a repeating or a non-repeating non-terminating decimal value its conjugate which is 1 minus the square root of 2 right that would also have to be a zero of that polynomial because the imaginary and irrational zeros always come in conjugate pairs Okay, then um, this idea of multiplicity, this we learned about in the math lab before uh, these notes, and that is not something you can skip. Okay, so do not try to do the notes before you've done that math lab on zeros and multiplicity because it's very important and we're not going to cover all of that here. So um, in that lab, you learned that multiplicity is the number of times a factor in a polynomial is repeated, and that's represented by exponents greater than one on the factor. Okay, and then along with that, on the back of your notes booklet, we're going to summarize what we learned in that math lab about zeros and their multiplicity. So on the graph of a polynomial, when the graph bounces off of the x-intercept, the factor that corresponds to that zero has to have had an even exponent. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right, any even exponent. The exponent is the multiplicity of the factor, okay, and the zero that corresponds to it. If your graph of your polynomial wiggles through um, a real zero on the x-axis, then that factor had to have had an odd exponent that was greater than 1, okay, so 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. And if there is a cross, like a line, right, not a wiggle, right, it's different, it crosses through the axis but um, along this straight trajectory, then that factor had to have been a linear factor, so it had an exponent of 1, right? And we don't normally write a 1 when it's an exponent, um, it's implied. 
So bounces have even exponents, wiggles have odd exponents greater than one, and crosses on the graph have an exponent of one. So when we look at example one, and we're asked to write a polynomial equation of least degree in its factored form, okay, and we're given this graph, we can see from this graph that the end behavior, right here are the ends to the far left and the far right. So the end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, we're headed to the left, the end is headed up. So the y is approaching positive infinity. Then on the right hand side as x approaches positive infinity, the y is also headed up to positive infinity. And I know from the leading coefficient test from our last lesson that when both ends point up, this had to have been an even degree polynomial because the ends are going in the same direction. And I know that the leading coefficient was positive. And, and that's from the leading coefficient test. If both ends point up, the degree of the polynomial was even, and the leading coefficient was a positive. Okay, now I can see from the graph that the zeros here are um, at x equals negative 2. I see the graph is bouncing here. And so that means that the 0 of negative 2 is a double root, because I'm looking at the equation of least degree, the smallest even number is 2, so it's a double root, that means it has multiplicity of 2. Then when I get over here to x equals 1, I see the graph is a wiggle through that x-intercept at positive 1, and that means it had odd multiplicity uh, greater than 1. And since I want the polynomial of least degree, the smallest odd number is 3, so x is equal to 1 has multiplicity of 3. And then I have another 0 here at 3 on the x-axis. It's just a cross, and so that's a linear factor. So we don't describe it as having multiplicity. Um, it's just a single root at x equals 3. Okay, so when I put all of that information together to write my equation in factored form, y or f of x, if you want function notation, is equal to a factor of x plus 2 with multiplicity of 2, a factor of x minus 1, with multiplicity of 3 and a factor of x minus 3, and that's just a linear factor, so its exponent stays a 1. Okay, my leading coefficient is positive, so I don't need to put um, anything in front of my first factor. And then I want to double check that my degree is in fact even so that my end behavior matches and I didn't make any mistakes. So to find the degree in factored form, we add up the exponents, the multiplicity on these factors, 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So this is a degree 6 polynomial that produces the graph that we see um, in its factored form. Okay, so um, pause the video and on your uh, scratch paper, if you would go ahead and try to write the equation of least degree in factored form that produces this graph, and then you can resume the video when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, so we're back. Um, we see that this polynomial has its left end pointed down and its right end behavior is headed up. And so this is an odd degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, right? And we can tell that from its end behavior. So odd degree positive leading coefficient. And then I have zeros. Well, a lot of zeros in this one. So my first zero I see here is at x equals negative 4, and the graph is crossing there. So that's going to be a factor of x plus 4, and it's a cross, so it's just a linear factor. Then I've got a wiggle in my graph here at x equals negative 2. That corresponds to the factor x 
plus two. And since it's a wiggle, it's going to have multiplicity of three. It's an odd number and I want the equation of least degree, so I use the smallest odd number, which would be three that's greater than one. Okay, then I come up here and there's a zero at one on the x-axis, so that corresponds to the factor x minus one. And that's a bounce at the zero, and so that has multiplicity of two, because bounces are even multiplicity, and uh, for an equation of least degree, that smallest even number would be two. And then our last real zero here that we see on the graph is at x equals two, that would be a factor of x minus two that corresponds to that zero, and it's a cross, so it's a linear factor. We've got a positive leading coefficient. When we double check the degree, one plus three is four, plus two is six, plus one is seven, which is odd, so odd degree, positive leading coefficient, makes this my polynomial of least degree in factored form for this problem. Okay, so go ahead and try this one on your own um, on some scratch paper and then resume the video when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, so let's see um, how you did when you tried this one on your own. So we have end behavior where the left end is headed up to positive infinity, the right end is headed down to negative infinity, and so this is an odd degree polynomial and it has a negative leading coefficient, right, because it starts up and ends down. So I'm going to begin my equation, y equals, and then I'm going to start with a negative um, in the front here. Okay, then I see at zero, there's a cross in my graph, right, that's a linear factor of x. So I'll begin with a negative x. Then um, I have at x equals one, another cross, and so that would be a factor of x minus one, which is also a linear factor. Okay, then at two, there's a bounce, right along that x-intercept, and a bounce has even multiplicity. So that factor of x minus two is going to have multiplicity of two, uh, because I want the equation of least degree. So two is my smallest even number. And then I've got a wiggle here on the graph at x equals negative three. And so that would be odd multiplicity on the factor of x plus three. And my smallest odd number greater than one is three. So I'm gonna put multiplicity three on that factor. Okay, we need to have an odd degree polynomial, so I add up all of my exponents here. One plus one is two, plus two is four, plus three is seven, so this is an odd degree polynomial. There's my leading coefficient needs to be negative, and it is, so this would be my polynomial of least degree um, in factored form.